in chapter 23, we are forked on how to prepare what is known as a master budget. But first, let's define what is a budget. <clears throat> a budget is a formal written statement of management plans for a specified future time period expressed in financial terms. In other words, this budget indicates what management expects to take place from a financial standpoint over a specified time period. A budget could be for a month, it could be for a quarter, or a budget could be for a 12-month period known as the fiscal year of that business organization. So with the budget, it allows us to communicate the agreed upon objectives throughout the organization. Many we are look at things such as how many units we plan to sell, produce, labor costs, material costs. We're going to come together within the various departments and plan this actual budget. It promotes efficiency. We all have a plan in front of us. We all know what's expected from an output standpoint, and it's a control device. So it allows us to keep track of production, what's taking place. We look at our costs. We can compare actual costs against budgeted costs. So this budget allows us to do things in an organized manner and helps us to control costs as well. So the master budget is a set of Interrelated related budgets, meaning that information from one budget is needed to prepare the next budget. And we'll look at these different types of budgets. There are two classes of budgets, what we call operating budgets and financial budgets. With the operating budgets, these are individual budgets that result in the preparation of the budgeted income statement. So we'll look at what type of budget, such as our sales budget, production budget, overhead budget, material budget, they're going to all be combined to prepare a budget and income statement. Then when we have our financial budgets, we'll look what we call our capital expenditures budget, the cash budget, and the budgeted balance sheet. Our focus now is on cash with these budgets. We want to make sure that we have sufficient cash to meet our operational needs and capital expenditure costs. And if we do not have enough cash, according to our plan, what sources do we have in order to obtain cash to meet our objectives? So let's take a look now at a master budget. The budget you see up here from sales, production, material, labor, overhead, sell and admin expense budgets. These are you, you prepare your budget income statement. So these are our operating budgets. And for the financial budget again, we're gonna have the capital expenditure budget, our cash budget, and our budgeted balance sheet. When you combine these budgets all together, they're known as the master budget. So we'll see how far we get with the master budget. This is probably broken down to two different video lectures due to the amount of material that we're trying to cover. So our first budget is going to be our sales budget. Based upon sales forecasts done by management, done by marketing, we are going to focus on how many units do we expect to sell over a specified time period? And what is the expected selling price of these units? So again, the sales budget is based upon forecasting that's been done by the company already. And we're going to predict the number of units we expect to sell over a specified time period including the actual selling price of those units. The sales budget is extremely important. It is the first budget within the master budget. Also, every other budget we're gonna prepare is dependent upon the sales budget 
and you'll see in a few how the budget are all tied in together, how they're going to be interrelated. So for our example, we have the Hayes Company, and we expect to sell 3,000 units of our product in the first quarter with an increase of 500 units being sold each succeeding quarter. Each unit has a sales price of $60. This is showing our sales budget for the entire year broken down by quarter. It shows how many units we expect to sell each quarter, 3,000 in the first quarter. That number is going to increase by 500 units each quarter, beginning with the second quarter, third, fourth quarter, etc. The sales price is going to be $60 per unit. So this shows total sales in terms of dollars for each quarter. It shows total units to be sold for the year, 15,000 units. Total sales dollars, $900,000. Now, every other budget will be predicated based upon this sales budget. Next, we show a production budget. In order to sell those units in the budget we just showed previously, we first have to produce the actual units. So with the production budget, we'll show the sales units on per quarter from the previous budget. Desire ending finished goods units. This is saying how many units would we like to have available at the end of each quarter because we do not want to run out of product. So we'll focus on how many units we want to have available at the end of each quarter. We'll also look at how many units were there available at the beginning of each quarter. So we'll take our budget sales units of each quarter, add in our desired ending inventory, subtract out the beginning inventory, and that will tell us how many units we're going to have to produce each quarter and for the fiscal year. So first, what you see are the sales units coming from our sales budget. The next line items are our desired ending finished goods inventory. Now, in our instructions, it says that we believe we can meet future sales needs with an ending inventory of 20% of the next quarter budgeted sales volume. So our goal is to have 20% of the future quarter sales remaining at the end of the current quarter. So for example, in the second quarter, we plan on selling 3,500 units. We want to have 20% of that amount or 700 units available at the end of the first quarter. So the desired ending inventory is going to be 20% of the expected sales for the upcoming quarter. Now for the fourth quarter, to get this 1,000, they said that in 2018, first quarter sales expect to be 5,000 units. So the 1,000 units would be 20% of the expected sales for the upcoming quarter, which would be the first quarter of 2018. Okay? So this is showing the number you expect to sell each quarter, the first line item. This is showing how many units I want to have available at the end of each quarter to get my total required units. But I also track from that my beginning finished goods units. This shows the num number of units we had available at the beginning of the quarter. Remember that the ending inventory is going to be 20% of the upcoming quarter sales. Therefore, the ending inventory 
for the fourth quarter of 2016 would have 20 would have been 20% of our 2017 first quarter sales or 600 units. We'll subtract what's required from what we already have to see how many units we need to produce for each quarter. So this is showing the number in red for each quarter we need to produce. When you add those all together, we need to produce for the year a total of 15,400 units. I'm going to end this video here and we're going to continue with a separate video for our master budget being put together.